Um, so I am on here because I wanted to use this opportunity to talk about something that had inspired me to really, I've been wanting to talk about this for quite some time, and that is the topic of apology. So I want you to take a moment and just ask yourself, are you someone who uses a lot of apologies? Do you say sorry a lot? Or are you someone who, you know, I made a mistake, so be it, right? Are you this kind of person of, you know what, I made a mistake and you just let it go and move on versus someone else who would just kind of replay in that scenario over and over and think about, well, I should have done it this way. I could have avoided it, right? So we start replaying all that events in our head, in our mind. Um, so today I'm really inspired to talk about, um, do you apologize very often? And if you do, what can you do about it? Um, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I have noticed um, especially within my friend circle, there's two, two kind of people. There's those who, you know, stand very firmly, very, um, uh, that mindset, they, they already set in stone that, you know, no matter what, I am never wrong, right? Um, we all know those people who are, you know, higher, uh, they have that egocentric uh, mindset. So there's, they never do anything wrong. And, and that can become a lot of trigger for a lot of uh, people versus others, they tend to um, have a softer approach, they have a big heart, and they're all coming out, you know, from the place of love. And when we come out from the place of love, we tend to use some words that will do a refund that will show a reflection of that big heart and that would include you know we might tend to apologize a little more and when you do apologize um in my circle i can i can just speak on my on my personal experience i have friends who uh, uses sorry a lot so you know when you bump into someone you say sorry when you drop something and it's in front of someone else, you say sorry. You, you know, maybe touch someone else's uh, phone, you say sorry. You use, pick up someone else's cup, you say sorry. Um, they, we, they are individuals who uses sorry a lot. And when you do that, it's, a, it's an energy that we carry. It's a vibration that we carry, right? So why words matter? Because how you speak to yourself or others will influence or impact the way that you feel about yourself. Um, so when you say sorry a lot, how that is being perceived is perhaps to someone else, you don't appear very confident. And when you demonstrate that, when you show that, you yourself probably don't feel very confident either. So how do we change that? <laughs> and this is important because I believe, I do believe word matters. So what you say to yourself really uh, plays a big role in our overall success in life and how we, how we really feel. Um, I am doing a webinar on, on starting on Friday. So it's a three-day webinar and each webinar would be one hour long. And the topic of that webinar, we're going to focus on, we're going to focus on self-love and self-compassion. One of the key important things about self-love and self-compassion is number one is having that awareness of where you are. And a lot of us will talk about self-love and self-compassion. We talk about all the things that we do to ourselves, but a lot of people don't realize that, you know, part of this self-love is really about owning yourself and, and choosing how you are speaking to yourself and all the internal narrative that we use to ourselves. That include, do you apologize to someone very often? Um, chances are, we do. And, and I know personally for me, you know, I, in the past, I, I talk about, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, I apologize for this. So I find, I found myself to be in that place where, you know, I'm doing a lot of apologies, um, whether it's necessary or not. I do. I was doing a lot of apologies. 
And sometimes it's also a reflection of, you know what, I want to make you happy. I want to put you first so that I am willing to sacrifice my own feeling or how I feel about the situation. Am I really sorry? Maybe not, but just to make you happy, make you feel better, I'm going to say sorry. So where are you on that? And that is um, totally about the six pillars of my coaching um, philosophy. So what are the six pillars of my coaching philosophy? Um, so basically, I broke it down into two sections. Um, there's the fundamental ABC, and I often call it going back to the ABC. And so we'll talk about the ABC. So what is A? A is, again, always authenticity. Um, authenticity, it's about being genuine and also having that sense of confidence. You are owning yourself and you know how exactly you feel. You may, you, may stand, you, you may be standing there and thinking, you know, I am not sorry about the whole situation at all. There's nothing to be sorry about, but yet in order to um, meet the expectation of others, you know, other, when you step on the foot of someone else, the expectation is that you say sorry, right? But what if you got pushed over and what if, you know, it, you, did, you, you didn't actually know that you stepped on someone? It was, it was not intentional. Oops, <laughs> I stepped on your foot. Let's move on. <laughs> so authenticity is about recognizing how you truly feel in that moment of time and whether or not you're taking ownership of that. Be genuine, be yourself, um, be present. And I think a lot of us, you know, we are so thinking about replaying all the events that, we, that had happened in our life from the past. And then we forget that, you know, right now is what matters. So we start shifting our focus to looking into the future, which creates a lot of overwhelming feelings and anxiety. Or we look back and we start replaying a lot of these stories and events and it makes us feel guilty and ashamed or, or just not very um, pleasant feelings. So authenticity, how do you really feel about yourself and do you really know your Yourself. So that is the ABC, the A, right? So B, which is bravery. And I spoke about bravery on a lot of different podcasts. And the, the key thing that I have shared was bravery is really the connection between the A to the C, between point A to point C. And why? Because when you have bravery and when you keep, can become more courageous, you are embracing all the unknowns, not attaching any expectation to what the future outcome will be. So instead of thinking about, well, how am I going to make the other person feel? You kind of just step up and you know what? I'm going, I have to go to emergency. That's what I'm going to do. And you know what? <laughs> if you don't feel, if the other person can take it and don't understand, that's not your problem right? But you took the ownership and, and you stood up for yourself. You're embracing whatever that outcome may be, but you decided to move forward. So that is bravery. It's, it's, it's embracing uh, the possibility that you might fail. And fail, failing is a big thing for a lot of people. People are afraid to fail. But if you think about it, if you never fall off the bike, how would you know how to ride a bike? So same concept, you know, it happens in a lot of aspects of our life. If you never experienced failure, how do you know the success is here? So you got to experience both in order to know, like, you know, where my life is going. So failure is not bad. It's just how you, how you define it, how you um, attach these meaning to the words that will create and generate all these emotions for you. So just be brave. Yeah, be out there persevere. That's another word for it that, that I really love, persevere. So bravery, B. And then we moving on to C. So I'm talking about the six pillar of my coaching philosophy and business. Um, so I broke it down into ABC again. So basic ABC, A, authenticity, B is bravery. And then we have C, we come to C. What is C? So C is connection. Uh, which is why I created this show. It's about bringing connection for everyone, right? Connecting with other um, inspiring and beautiful souls. Um, over the year, I must have connected with, oh gosh, 
50, I had about 50, this is the 54th episode. So I, I connected with 53 um, beautiful souls from all over the place, all over the world. And part of the reason why we have that such connection is again, being genuine and being, being yourself, you make that stronger bond between you and another person. Um, and you are never alone. So I would, I remember when I first started this show, I was um, at a place where, you know, I really don't want to talk for 30 minutes all by myself. I run out of content to talk about. So what can I do to, um, to make this actually more fun, more, more uh, inviting and more, um, it, it would be more informative. I wanted to do all that. And the only option that I came up with was, well, you know, maybe I'll invite other guests to come and join me because I don't have to do this alone. So connection is about being an influencer to connect everyone and also recognizing that you are not alone. Now, so that's the ABC part of the six pillars. The other portion of the six pillars are three, my 3D. So what are the three Ds? Those of you who've been following me and remember this, you probably have heard me talking about this uh, for some time. So the three Ds are determination, dedication, and discipline. So you have the ABC, which is more of the inner work that you do, right? So cultivating that sense of authenticity, cultivating that, that sense of bravery, and that will allow you to make that connection. Now, now, once you make that connection, and this is how you always move forward in life, is how do you put it in action? And in order to put everything into action, put all the practices into action, you have to have that 3D, determination, dedication, and discipline. So determination is something that you define a purpose and uh, my vision board night is coming up by the way in January. So I'm going to have a vision board night where we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about the vision for 2021. Um, so de determination is you're setting a direction of how you want to go. Determination has a purpose. Determination has a direction. Determination has a goal. Um, you put a kind of set it like a, a, a pin drop onto your goal, that's where you are going. Um, so a lot of us, we want to set up goal or we have goal. What we end up um, not doing is doing that inner work, to going back to the basic ABC. So what you find is that a lot of people, they have determination, but without the, the ABC, without the basics, they find that they have a lot of trouble reaching to that, the pin drop. So you need to combine the two of them together, the ABC and the 3D, right? So set your inner, get, get, get your inner work done. Then you set up your determination. That's how, where the direction that we want to go. And next would be the discipline. The discipline is having that knowledge, having that, wait, uh, next one is uh, dedication. Dedication is having a commitment or more action oriented. So you drop a pin on your map. This is where I want to go. Then your next step would be how much are you willing to commit? And when you talk to a lot of people, you know, many people have a goal, have a vision, but when it comes to goal and vision, they talk about, well, you know, I don't have a lot of time to go out and exercise. All right, but you want to Maybe let's say hypothetically, you want to lose weight, all right? How do you approach in losing weight? Well, you know, I'm working seven days a week and this and that, I really don't have any time to um, losing weight. I don't have time to go to the gym. I'm so exhausted by the time I go to the gym. You hear that a lot because they're not dedicated to, to what they say they would do. Um, so having a determination, having a goal, set up your uh, mile marker, set up, drop the pin on your map. The next step would be how much are you willing to commit? Like, so that uh, with the key um, understanding of if, I'm me, I, if I need to dedicate to something, I need to look at the pros and cons, <laughs> right? What do I have to lose if I don't do it? What do I have to lose um, if I don't commit myself to losing weight, for example. 
I don't know, maybe I'll sit home and I'll eat some more, right? What do I have to lose? And when you talk about what do I have to lose, people start going into that space of, well, I don't feel good. I feel guilty. I feel ashamed about my body. And, and I just, it's not very motivating, does it? So what you want to do is the pros and cons. We'll also talk about um, what do you have to gain? You're losing 20 pounds. That's pretty awesome. Considering yourself, you know, next year, the same time, you open up your wardrobe, you go into your closet, and you have a whole set of new clothes that's waiting for you. And here you are, you're down to size two or four or whatever, that, that, that goal that you set up, right? What do you have to gain? And when you consider the pros and cons, it's a different set, set of vibes and energy that you can bring into moving forward. And that's how you keep yourself motivated. That's how you keep yourself um, inspired. And you know, ultimately, I don't believe that the coaching relationship is something that lasts forever, <laughs> which is why I'm working hard to, you know, putting a lot of energy out there so that this is not something that I don't expect to be working with a client for the rest of their life because at some point when they're ready to move on forward I want to say you know what you don't need my help anymore I'm going to sign you off right um, it's not something a long-term <clears throat> it's a long-term friendship but it's not a long-term transactional um, relationship it's not something like that it's a long-term friendship but it's yeah, at, at some point, I, I, tell, I tell my client, you know what, I'm going to sign you off. You're, you're ready to go. You don't need my help. That's stay at, as friend, but you don't need my help. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so going back to dedication. Dedication is how much are you willing to commit? Um, if you are not, if you come, notice you're coming up with all these excuses of why not to do it or why you are doing it, then that would become your own self-motivation. All right, so the last one, um, my six pillars is the discipline. Discipline, people think about discipline as something that, you know, I gotta push hard and push myself to do it every single day. Um, the way that I see discipline, and, and if you look up the definition of discipline, it's really about the knowledge, the the uh, skills that you have and that you're willing to redirect yourself based on the skills that you have. So discipline is really about the knowledge, the information that you have and the self-control that you can provide as well as putting things into practice. So, you know, the, the reason why there's a disconnect between uh, what getting to what you want and, and versus, you know, you know your direction, but, but actually getting there is that practice right? We all want self-love. We all want, you know, that self-care. We all want that self-confidence and we want to live that life of happiness and, 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 and wisdom and, and just joy and wealth and health and purpose. You, we want all that, but without practice, you can get there. So you kind of put into practice. So discipline is about practice. I can talk forever, but if today you're going to turn off the video and you're going to move on and do your own things and like you've always been doing, then it's not going to work, right? Which is why you find yourself watching a lot of video, but what does the video do for you? So <clears throat> that are, that, that is the six pillars of my whole um, coaching philosophy. How does that tie back to the, the, what the topic I was talking about, about apologies? So apologies, <laughs> apologies. Um, that feeling of, you know, I did something wrong and, or that feeling of guilt or having done something to someone else and that we feel bad for themselves, for them, right? Um, so we start having these internal messages that start popping up. You know, I feel so bad that I have to do this for you. I, I feel so sorry. And so we start getting into a habit of keep apologizing. And one of the key things I believe is to break that habit of apologizing. So if you are someone 
who have started to notice that you are using sorry or you apologize a lot, take a moment and do a little self-reflection and ask yourself, like, what is it that you are feeling in that moment? I, do you feel, is that, is that, if you were to give a label to what you're feeling, is that feeling, would you call it guilt? Would you call it shame? Would you call it, I don't know, um, regret? So stop for a minute and think about how often you apologize to people and why do you apologize? Was it something that you really intentionally um, have done not within the usual usual um, expectation or is this something that you simply just got into a habit of doing it and in order to build that self-confidence that is the, the first step right to recognize that this is the pattern this is how you're behaving and and that comes with authenticity uh, being authentic to yourself or to others means that you are truth to your feeling. And to be truth to your feeling, you have to recognize what is it that you are feeling. So do you use sorry just as a way to, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah, but what's that, what's that feeling, underlying feeling or emotion behind that word? So that comes with authenticity. And now that you recognize it, you got to move forward to working through all the basics, right? How do we correct it? How do we, how do we course redirect? And then taking, moving, putting things into action. So to wrap up, let me just tell you how I kind of redirect my whole way, whole approach of apologizing or how I approach to say sorry. It is that I don't necessarily say, I'm sorry right away. If I run into you and I bump into you, you know, for that brief moment, I am really sorry. I'm sorry I bump into you, but I am not sorry. Uh, or there's no no shame, no guilt, no regret of the actions that I took. It was unintentional. I'm sorry. Um, I tend to use the word apologize a lot or apologies because apology has a different connotation than sorry. Apology is apologizing for um, something that had happened in the event itself, but sorry is more, you, you, you'll notice the sorry has a more um, inner feeling of I am the one who's sorry for things. Whereas apology is, is it's, it's really about the situation itself rather than attaching it from a personal, coming out from a personal perspective of, you know, something wrong with me. And, and there is nothing wrong with you, but it have just so happened that the situation that you were in requires apology. So that is the difference between saying sorry versus saying, I apologize. I apologize for creating a, you know, inconvenience for you. But that's all it is. It's a situation that is out of your control. It's not about you. It's about the situation. So today, here's your practice. <laughs> um, we're always going to talk about the principle, the teaching, and then the practice. What is it that you have learned from hearing all this, right? So are you someone who uses, so I'm sorry, a lot? And when you use it, is it intentional? Is it something, a reflection of how you're feeling? Or is it just that you got into a habit of doing it? If you got into a habit of doing it without you catching it, then that creates a um, feedback on, on you and the language that we use in our, to ourselves. So start catching it and come up with maybe a list of other things that you can talk, you can say instead of saying sorry. So that is um, our 30 minutes coffee talk today. It's about the six pillars of my coaching philosophy, which include going back to the basic, the A, B, and C, and the three Ds, determination, dedication, and discipline. This is how we connect the inner world to the outer world so that we can be successful in our life, whether it's 
having more freedom, happiness, wisdom, whatever that you are aiming for and strive for, that's the direction that we're going. Um, so happy Wednesday. This is Wednesday Live Talk Talk. Um, I typically have a guest on this show to share their life transformational journey with you. Um, I will have another guest coming on next week on Wednesday. And so join me and tune in again on Wednesday at eight o'clock in the morning. Bye.